Hi guys, um, we will continue with chapter 2.3 and this is the B part, this is the second part um, and what we're looking at in this video is a vector addition of forces. Uh, please look at the previous video um, when I, dis I discussed this. Um, what we discussed in the last video is that really um, we want to do generally always do one of two things. Number one, we want to f either find a resultant force. If we've got more than one force acting on some body, right? If this is a body or it's a bracket or it's a, I keep using the calculator or a laptop or something, and we've got some forces acting on it, oftentimes we would like to find out what is the resultant of these two forces. What is, what is their net effect? Okay? Is that clear? Then the second thing that we generally always want to do is we would want to find the components of a single force but in two arbitrary axes, along two arbitrary axes. So, so either we want to find a resultant or we have, in a sense, a resultant but we want to find its components along two arbitrary axes. So please get, please, please understand that the, the, the two, really the two governing things that we want to do, um, and both of these guys is is determined by something called the parallelogram law or the triangle rule. So uh, you can go study this even further. This is in section two point two. Okay. But essentially, what is the parallelogram rule or the triangle rule, par parallelogram law or the triangle rule? It just simply says that if I have two forces here, two arbitrary forces, then what I need to do is I need to complete this parallelogram drawing, okay? Meaning that from this head, I draw a, a line that is parallel to this force vector. Okay. Then, from the head of this force vector, I draw a line parallel to this force vector. Okay, I'm just going to repeat that. From this force, the head of this force vector, I draw a line parallel to that force vector. And from the head of this force vector, I draw a line parallel. And where they cross, I then draw a line from this vertex to this vertex. And this becomes my resultant. That then is my resultant force vector. If I have one force there, and I have another force there, that then becomes my resultant force vector. So it's the parallelogram law. Right? So read up on chapter 2.2. Okay? The, the alternative is if I'm trying to find a component, I also use the parallelogram law, okay? So if I have, if I have a force and I want to, I have these two arbitrary axes, U and V. Actually, the textbook swaps them around. That is V and that is U. If I want to obtain the components of this force along two arbitrary axes, I also make use of the parallelogram law. So what does that mean? It means that from the head, right, from the head of this resultant force vector, I draw a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. Okay. Or, uh, not or, and um, from the head of this force vector, I draw a line parallel to the other axis until it cuts this axis. Okay? So, just learn this. It's very simple. From the head of the, of the resultant force vector, I draw a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. I draw a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. And there, 
I have my two components. It is also based on the parallelogram law. Okay? Please also read up on the triangle rule. It's, very, it's, it's almost identical to the parallelogram law, um, just used as a triangle. So, so guys, please take note of this. If I have two forces and I want to find a resultant, again, I, use, I complete the parallelogram and I draw this line, which then becomes my resultant. Or if I have a resultant force, if I have a single force, and I want to find the components of the force along two arbitrary axes, I complete this parallelogram from the head of the force parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. And the same here, parallel to this axis until it cuts the other axis. And there become, these then become my two components. What does this mean, guys? Think about it. Please think critically. It means that if I apply a force in this direction with this magnitude, and I apply a force in this direction with this magnitude, I will get this resultant force. Can you see how it's the same here? I apply a force in this direction with this magnitude and a force in that direction with that magnitude. I get a resultant force in this direction with this magnitude. So can you see they're, they're identical, but the one uses the, 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 uh, uses the components, the, the number of forces to calculate a resultant. This one, you have the resultant and you're trying to calculate the components. Okay, we will go into more detail in the next uh, video.